Hey y'all, Michelle here with My Designs in the Chaos, where it's our goal to develop, encourage, and grow your crafting talent and confidence. Today, we're going to be creating a laurel, also known as a half wreath, together inside of Inkscape. Here's a picture of a really simple laurel that we're going to be creating together today. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over to the side so we can just kind of use that as a reference and a guide. That's what we're going to be creating. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually create this line that we're going to use as our stem. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. That's this little pin looking tool right here. And I'm going to click on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a little arch right here across the middle. So I'm going to click one time, which is going to give me my starting point, which is also called a node. And then I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to click hold down my mouse and then drag my mouse out to the sides so that that node gets a handle on it. And that handle is how I'm going to be able to adjust the arch of whatever I want my laurel to look like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let go. And that's all I need. I'm just gonna do one little arch like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click back on Select and Transform Objects. When you're on the pen tool, you wanna make sure that you're on the mode that says Create Regular Bezier Path and that the shape is on None. Once I have that drawn, I'm going to go ahead and click on my black arrow and you can see I've kind of got that little arch going. Now, it's not quite as thick as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that um, line a little bit thicker. That line is also called a stroke. And so I'm going to go up here to object and I'm going to open up the fill and stroke menu. And you can see on the side a little menu that says fill and stroke opens up. You can see you have a fill. You have a stroke paint and a stroke style. We're going to click on stroke style and we're going to click on this little stroke width that has a little plus sign and we're just going to make it a little bit fatter. You can make this as thin or as bold as you want. So I encourage you get in there, play around a little bit so that um, you can make it look exactly the way that you want. And then I'm also going to click on this cap. I want it to have a rounded cap on the end. You can see right now it's totally straight across that end. I'm going to have it be rounded. And so it just kind of softens it up a little bit. And so from there, we're good with what that line is looking like. I'm going to actually click it one more time. So that way these arrows turn to where I can rotate it. And I'm just going to rotate it up just a little bit. Now, if you're not totally pleased with your line and you want to adjust it, you can always click right here on the Edit Path by Nodes button, and you can click on that node and you can drag it around. You can also use that handle and you can manipulate it that way as well. Okay, from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that Fill and Stroke menu for now just to give us some space to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click back on my Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. And I'm going to keep it on the um, regular Bezier path option. And we're going to create the little leaves that are going to go onto our laurel. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to click one time and then I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold and I'm going to drag out those handles. You're getting lots and lots of practice with the handles today. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to let go of my mouse. And you can see that that segment turned green. And then from here, I'm just going to bring it back up to the top until it turns red and I'm going to click. So it kind of creates this weird like leaf looking shape. But what we're going to do is that shape doesn't look anything like these shapes. And so we need to modify it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the Edit Path by Nodes tool. And you can see I've got two nodes here. This node looks good. I like the shape of that at the top. This is the one that I don't like. So I'm going to click on that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it from it being a curved or smooth node to a corner node, which just means that now I can independently move each side of this handle. So I'm going to bring this one kind of up here to the side and then I'm going to fatten this one up just a little bit. And this is where you can kind of play and make that laurel leaf look exactly the way that you want. Okay, that's looking pretty good for me. Now, I want to also make sure that I have this filled in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to my fill and stroke menu. I'm going to click right here on fill 
And right now you can see it doesn't have a fill at all. I'm going to click right there on that color. And so now I'm going to go ahead and close that menu off because I don't need that one anymore. And now I've got my little leaves that I'm going to use for my laurel. Now, this leaf is a lot bigger than my actual laurel line, so I need to resize it a little bit. And so you can see when I have it selected, I have these black arrows. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the control key and hold that down at the same time that I'm clicking in that top corner, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. The reason why I'm holding that control key down is so that it gets smaller proportionately. And then now I'm going to bring it over here and then I'm going to click it one more time so that I can rotate it. So if you click it once, you'll get bigger and smaller. Click it again and you can rotate. And I'm just going to rotate it out. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And again, this is where the fun part comes in. You can kind of rotate it and make this laurel look exactly the way that you want. And so we're going to do that. And I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste this to the other side. I'm going to rotate it out. And then we've got our first little leaf. It's kind of starting to come together. I also am gonna put one right up here at the top. So again, I'm gonna copy this and paste it. And I'm gonna rotate it. And I'm kind of just duplicating what I'm doing. I'm holding down control and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that it kind of um, complements this top area. I'm gonna bring it over just a little so that it lines up. And now we've got the nice top area of it. It's looking pretty good. And so what I'm going to do, rather than having to recreate this every single time, I'm going to select both of these two leaves. I'm going to do copy and I'm going to do paste. And I'm just going to bring it down here onto my stem. I'm going to click it one more time, rotate it just a little bit, and it's up to you how much space you want to leave. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paste it again and bring it down. I'm going to rotate it a little bit and then you can kind of see like this side maybe needs to be rotated a little more and we can go in and do those individual edits. For now I just kind of want to get the base on there so that we can kind of see what this looks like. The fun part about these laurels is that every time you create one it's probably going to look a little different. You can see how my leaf here looks a little bit different than my leaf here. The angle looks a little bit different than my angle here and that's one of the really fun things um, when you design these is that every time they're a little bit unique and so all we're doing here is I'm gonna just add this last one right down here at the bottom now some of these um, I want to rotate out a little bit and so that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna rotate some of these leaves outwards I'm gonna click on it one time and then click on it again so that it's the rotation and then I'm gonna rotate it click and drag it down a little bit and so again, that's personal preference on what you want your leaves to look like. But you can go in and you can edit and manipulate each and every one of them. And then I'm going to do the same down here. Just move it around a little bit and bring it down to the bottom. And then one last one right down here on the bottom. And you can get sucked into this and spend a really long time editing these. So I encourage you when you're first playing with it, don't get too sucked in where it's like, ah, you don't actually end up creating anything because you're so worried about those miniature details. But it is fun. It's a fun part of the process. So now at this point, we've got one whole stem. But there's a couple things that we need to do to this so that it can be used on a cutting machine. The first thing that we need to do is this stem itself is actually still only a single line. So we're going to go right up here and we're going to go to path and we're going to click on stroke to path. And now instead of it being a single line, it will actually cut the outline of that path. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to make sure that this is all one element. Instead of each of these being their own individual leaf, we want to make sure this will all be one big thing. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. And I'm going to go up here to path and I'm going to click on union. And now you can see all those little spaces went away. And this is how we can see it's one leaf. Another way that you can do that, here's a little hack for you. You can go to display mode outline and you can see where those lines are. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my display mode normal.
And then what we're going to do is we need to actually create the other side. So we're just going to copy this and paste it. So now we have two. And then right up here at the top, this little orange button, it says flip selected objects. We're going to flip it the other direction. And now we're going to kind of cross these right down here at the bottom. And you can angle them if you want them to be a little more angled. Again, just like we angled the leaves. So if you want those to angle a little bit, if you want these to cross, and then here's another little tip for you. If you want to make sure that they are exactly even, you can select both of them. You can go up here to Object, Align, and Distribute, and that will open up a little menu over here on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to make sure that these are both in the middle. So I'm going to go right here and say Center on Horizontal Axis. And you could see that one bumped up a little bit. And so now I know that they're both centered and I want to make them become one element. I'm going to actually scoot this one side over to the left just a tad. I'm going to angle it just a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to union them. So now it's all one object. And that's how we're able to create a very unique and simple laurel here inside of Inkscape. You can do so many fun things with these. You can put initials, you can put years, you can put names. There's so many fun different things. Make sure to come connect with us over inside our free Facebook community because I want to see what you are working on. And if you have a question, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I would love to be able to hear from you. Until next time, I encourage you, stop just collecting and start actually creating. And remember, there's no wrong way to craft. I'll see you back next time. Bye.